What's up everybody, how's it going? First of all, disregard my hair, it's out of control. Second of all, a little while ago I did a bunch of Q&A videos about life at Google, and someone asked me, what does a staff software engineer at Google do? To which I responded that I would dedicate an entire video to this topic. Well, this is that video, we're talking about staff software engineers. What are they, and what do they do? Now to be clear, when I was at Google, I wasn't a staff software engineer. That being said, I did work very closely with quite a few staff software engineers, and I got to observe a lot of them from a distance. So in this video, that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. I'm going to be sharing my observations of what these staff software engineers are and what they do. For a little context, a staff software engineer at Google is an L6 engineer. There's L3, the entry level, L4, L5 is senior, and then L6 is staff software engineer. And then beyond that, it goes all the way to L10 or L11. That is the engineering ladder or hierarchy. Now, another important note is that starting at L5 on the engineering ladder, there's the engineering management ladder that kind of pops out of it diagonally. So there's engineering manager one at L5, engineering manager two at at L6 at the staff software engineer level, and then it keeps going up. I'm mentioning this because I'm going to be using the word manager in this video a lot. However, I'm going to be referring to the normal engineering track, not the engineering management ladder that pops out of it. Anyway, with all that confusion out of the way, let's jump into it. What is a staff software engineer? Well, when I was at Google, I identified three different genres of staff software engineers. There was the individual contributor staff software engineer, and we'll get into what that means in a second. Then there was the TL staff software engineer, the team lead or tech lead. And then there was the manager staff software engineer, not the official engineering manager on the engineering manager track, just the staff software engineer who's in a management position. And as you'll soon see, these three genres of staff software engineers are all quite different. The one commonality that they all share is that if you want to be hired as a staff software engineer, you have to pass coding interviews and systems design interviews. And you know how to prep for coding interviews and systems design interviews? With my company, of course, AlgoExpert. Go to AlgoExpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. We just released 10, 10 new coding interview questions, and I just got a message from an L7 software engineering manager at Amazon who used Systems Expert to prepare for his interviews. He said it was really helpful. Do with that information as you please, and let's get back into it. So let's start with the individual contributor, staff software engineer. This is the canonical example of a staff software engineer. This is an engineer who has decided that they're not really interested in a managerial position. They're interested in engineering. They like to code. They like to do technically complex complex work, and that's what they want to do. Now, for those types of engineers, I actually saw two different subtypes of work that they did. Some of them were literally normal software engineers as part of a team who just happened to do more difficult work. They would take on the really complicated features that had to be done, or they would do easy features, but a lot of them, like a ton of work. You can think of them as just like overpowered engineers. Now, the second type of work that I saw these individual contributor staff software engineers do was a little bit more nebulous. That was the kind of work where they sought out new problems, new engineering problems, and basically explored them to see if there was some sort of project to create out of them. This is where things can get really challenging. I'll try to give you an example here, a fake example, but imagine you had a staff software engineer working on the front end of Google Cloud Platform where I worked, and one day they said to themselves, you know what? I think that we should migrate the entirety of Google Cloud Platform front end from Angular to React. Again, this is a fake example just to give you an idea of the type of project that I'm talking about here, but that would be a non-obvious thing to do. Like, first of all, why should we migrate from Angular to React? Some people in the company are definitely going to disagree with you there. Second of all, this is something that's going to involve a ton of different teams. You're going to have to convince like 20 different teams to actually take part of this migration. Are they all going to be down to do that? Are they all going to be down to allocate one, two, even three quarters to doing that? Well, that's really questionable. 
Well, that's where the staff software engineer is gonna have to say, well, you know what? I'm gonna allocate a quarter to try this out. I'm gonna do like a small version of migrating some code base from Angular to React for Google Cloud Platform, and I'm gonna try to prove whether or not my idea is correct. And then I'm gonna try to get buy-in from other teams or other people. And then I'm gonna try to lead an entire project out of this. And then eventually, hopefully, it gets adopted and this actually becomes a thing. The point is, this type of work is the kind of work that's very non-obvious, very obscure, might take a very long time, it's very technically complex, and it's something that takes a lot of technical leadership and technical initiative to do. It's not handed to you on a silver platter, you have to seek it out. So that's the individual contributor staff software engineer. The second type is the TL. The TL the team lead or the tech lead, is the staff software engineer who started to flirt with management. They're likely leading a fairly large project, one that's got a lot of engineers working on it. They're probably doing the overarching design of the project and kind of orchestrating it, telling engineers what they should work on or figuring out what they should work on, but they're likely still doing a little bit of coding. Maybe they're implementing part of the project. But as time goes on and as a team grows and as projects evolve, these people will likely start to stray away from coding and move more and more and more into the design aspect and the kind of orchestrating and, and moving engineers around aspect of engineering. Now to be clear, they are not people managers. They're mostly doing technical leadership, but it's very common to hear these types of staff software engineers start to lament the fact that they no longer code that much. Maybe they don't even do that many code reviews. They do a few code reviews, but most of their work is just making sure that other engineers are doing what they're supposed to do or are working on the correct things and that everything is kind of pieced together. The interesting thing about these types of staff software engineers is that even if you rarely see them coding, you just see them orchestrating engineering projects, rest assured that they're excellent software engineers. The mere fact that they got to the L6 level is indicative of that. Of course, there are exceptions. You can still get fired as a staff software engineer if you're a low performer, for example. However, for the most part, they are excellent software engineers. The third and final type of staff software engineer is what I called the manager. Again, we're not talking about the official engineering management ladder. However, these are staff software engineers who are no longer just flirting with management. They're full on making out with it at that point. Of course, this is a metaphor, but these are staff software engineers who have really found themselves in a position where it makes more sense for them to just manage. Maybe they were one of the first engineers on a project that blew up into something huge. They started to have to assume people management responsibilities, and now it just makes more sense for them to do just that. And they have TLs under them who do all the technical stuff. They might still do a little bit of technical stuff. They'll dip their fingers here and there, but overall they're doing people management, they're doing organizational management, that kind of stuff, and they're likely eyeing a promotion where they'll switch from the normal engineering ladder to the engineering management ladder. These are the types of engineers who will often go from L6 to L7 and do that diagonal swap into the pure engineering management. So these are the three genres of staff software engineers that I saw at Google. I worked at least in some capacity alongside all three of those kinds of staff software engineers. And that's it. I hope that you found this video insightful. I hope that you have a better understanding of what it is that a staff software engineer at Google does and who they are. And with that, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, do it right now, and I will see you in the next video.